everyone. Welcome to another edition of Métis Warrior here with Timothy and Alexandria. Hello, everybody. So today we're going to talk about the election that is happening in Saskatchewan. And uh, I'd like to start off by saying that McCollum has not been transparent at all over the years. About two and a half years now, we've reached out to him and we've gotten zero answers and zero response. In fact, uh, he's so not transparent at all that there's a lot of secrecies and people have to wonder why is there a lack of transparency within the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and with that transparency what is going on with the money that is uh, this being this should be going to the Métis people now with more transparency obviously you would have uh, an idea of where all that money is actually going. We do know that Marianne Morin did ask for transparency. She's been silenced. She was the treasurer or is the treasurer uh, of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and they booted her out of that position because she was trying to inform the people about what was going on with the finances. She was trying to be transparent and they didn't want that clearly uh and so they booted her out and it's been to court etc now she is running for president because she feels like uh she can get more money to the actual metis people because when you elect a leader of a metis organization that leader is a representative of the metis people that leader is not a dictator so keeping that in mind your representative you should not have to pucker up and kiss them on the butt to uh, get your your benefits and your funding instead that funding should come straight from the government to the organization and from the organization straight to the people and there should be no secrecy about that money so we believe 100 percent that with marianne morn wins the election she will get more money to the Métis people in Saskatchewan. And keep in mind that we do know that Chartier is running, but Chartier's had a lot of issues with misappropriation of funding. Within, uh, Chartier's had a lot of issues within the Métis Nation National Council uh, as far as misappropriation of funding. And there's a lot of nepotism going on, and we want fair and equal treatment for all Métis in the different areas that are being representative so when we're just looking at Saskatchewan okay so the Métis in Saskatchewan should have fair and equal treatment and if you want an elected president that's going to do that your clear choice for that for honesty and transparency would be Marianne Morin and again uh, the election for the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan is May 29th 2021 and just like timothy said if you have a leader that is not approachable by the people uh doesn't want to speak to the people give interviews that should give you huge red flags and let's face it we've done numerous stories on the metis nation of saskatchewan in the past they are not transparent they are not accountable to the people i mean if you've got nothing to hide why wouldn't you come on and speak with the people and uh, tell them what you're really doing for the people because as a leader the people should always come first. And we know with our struggles with the MMF, MNC, the people certainly do not come first. The almighty dollar comes first. And uh, it's a select group of people that are, that are just in charge of that. And uh, they have nepotism and they're just very, very scared of somebody uh, that is a threat to their money pot and uh, the federal funding coming down the pipeline and certainly when we were speaking with Marianne Morin I mean she's got all these uh, qualities uh, that would be uh, a high asset to somebody running for president of Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and as well today is May 5th and it's recognizing missing and murdered uh, indigenous women Saskatchewan leads the way with violence against indigenous women. 
Okay, and so let's look at your choices here. You have McCollum, who's already in there, who is uh, not transparent to the people. Clearly, the Canadian government just doesn't give a crap, uh, and they're not looking into the misappropriation of funds, if there is any. And where is the money going? Is all the money making it out to the Métis people? We have no transparency here. We've reached out to him several times. And so these leaders are supposed to represent the people, not dictate to the people. And so the concern is McCollum has definitely been in there long enough and has not really uh, wanted to, to be transparent. So uh, we don't know all the wrongs that could potentially be going on. We do know that there's a lot of complaints against McCollum. Uh, and a lot of people are complaining that they're not getting the things that they should be getting in Saskatchewan. And so when you look at uh, Chartier, Chartier, there's nothing but problems and issues. Uh, he's been tied up with misappropriation of funds within the Métis Na National Council. Um, and yeah, again, when you look at the Canadian government, they completely turn their head to that. And uh, knowing, knowing that there was issues there, and for whatever reason, they let it go. And so that was an injustice that was done to the Métis people. Because this is money that the Canadian government gives for your rights. So when you join an organization, you give up your rights to these organizations. And they take these rights to Canada and they get funding. So this money that's meant to go to people is supposed to go to people. It's not supposed to be misappropriated. So... Uh, McCollum and Charte is clearly not the best choice for president. Now, when you look at some of these people that's been elected in the office and they're running around shaking hands and trying to hand out money to people, here's a hundred here, here's a hundred there. How much of that's actually tax dollars that's been misappropriated trying to buy votes? And so that's not what you want. What you want is fair leadership. You want someone who's going to come in there and they're going to actually take that funding and split it fairly. And so if you want more to be done with the Métis in Saskatchewan, if you want more money getting out to the Métis in Saskatchewan, you need to vote for Marianne Morin because at the end of the day, she has been the most transparent candidate that we have come across. And again, uh, speaking about Clem Chartier, I mean, people, Métis people have to really take the blinders away from their eyes. I mean, we all know that he stepped aside, stepped back from the leadership role of the Métis National Council. It was all over the media, but yet at every opportunity, he's still being called the president. They do their uh, monthly newsletters of the MNC, still calling himself president. I'm only to assume, in my opinion, that he's still collecting a salary as president for the Métis uh, National Council. So why are you telling the people you're stepping aside, stepping uh, back? Aren't you resigning? So if you're resigning... And, 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 he, and keep in mind, that happened right after that audit that I was talking about with the misappropriation of funds in 2018. Right after that, all of a sudden, Chartier was going to jump ship. Obviously, it seems to us like he thought maybe there was some prosecution going to come or some fallout. And the, and the controversy that was surrounding the funding, where did the money go? And so that right after that, he says, oh, I'm stepping down. Okay. Was that a publicity stunt? I don't know. So, no, that was a way to dodge the bullet. So that's right. But so is that going to be a transparent, accountable leader? If you say you're resigning, stepping aside from a leadership role of the MNC, but yet you're still uh, entertaining calls with government officials using the title of president. I mean, that's not somebody that's going to be for the people, by the people. And that's a huge, huge red flag of somebody that's going to come and and I mean, certainly going to probably take the mentality, in my opinion, of the MNC or MMF into the leadership role of Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. And, and, we... and, and let's, let's, let's look into the MNC again real quick here. Let's not forget that Char David Chartran and Clem Chartier did not want to hold a uh, did not want to hold a uh, MNC Board of Governors meeting because they're the, what they put out was. If they were going to lose, why hold it? And so, if that's the, does that seem like fairness to you? This is a dictatorship and a corruption uh, like no other. 
uh, and, and it's got to stop. This has to stop. So you're not going to hold a board of governors meeting because you think you're going to lose. That's called a democracy. If you still hold the meeting, even if you lose, that's fairness in a democracy. You don't not hold the meeting because you think you're going to lose. So let's keep that in mind. And again, Timothy mentioning the term of democracy, the MNC and the MMF, I mean, uh, democracy should not even be said in the same sentence with them because they certainly are not, uh, they don't hold uh, democracy anywhere when they deal with the people. They, they, uh, they ride that leadership role with an iron fist and uh, when somebody tries to uh, ask questions, they lash out and they go into attack mode. So certainly that's not qualities of leadership. We're just like the MNS. The MNS is a dictatorship too, the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. It's all a dictatorship. Now what the comment, you're going to hear in the interview that we did with Marianne Moore, and one of the most important takeaways from that is she's going to get rid of the dictatorship and she's going to give the power back to the people that they represent. It's not going to be a dictatorship no more. It's going to become an actual round table and this is the this is the this is the way it should always be and so the power will be back in the hands of the Métis citizens in Saskatchewan not controlled by the dictatorship of McCollum. Well here's another example. Or, or potentially Chartier if he was to get in there. And here's another example of Clem Chartier. I mean when things don't go his way or he's not in full control uh, mode there. Uh, recently he challenged uh, the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan voting rules at the time only registered members were able to vote um, and he said that wasn't fair. Prior to the change any Métis 16 years of age and up could simply show up and swear a declaration that you're Métis. So Chartier wanted that because then he would have more potential of him having a landfall in his own twisted mind. And let's look at the history of Chartier here, okay? So he's telling you to self-declare specifically for the election. But what do you think is going to happen to you when you come to collect any money after the election? Well, we can only judge that by looking at the history. Uh, the history is that they have been very, very misappropriating the funding in the past. And the less, mo the less people that they got to give away money to, that, that's the way that they prefer it. Because that's the more money that uh, can get misappropriated, right? That's, or can go to uh this person they know or that person they know instead of a whole group of individuals so if you believe for one second that after the election that these people that are self-declaring will get any benefits or money you're absolutely insane because this is just a tactic to get this guy in power and then they could turn around and, and clearly they could turn around and say hey you're not actually matey so uh, you know this you're not going to get any benefits here but obviously this was a chance to get people to rig the election. Uh, it seems to us like it, it, a lot of people, not just us, but a lot of people out there has complained about this self-declaring thing, uh, you know, and, and to, to rig the election. That's what that's what's going on. And it damn sure seems like that to us. So, folks, uh, the candidates that are currently running for president of Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, of course, Clem Chartier, Glenn McCollum, Marianne Morin, and Karen uh, LaRocque. So those are the people that are running, and certainly uh, with Marianne's uh, background with uh, uh, being one of the very few Aboriginal chartered professional accountants with a background in federal government and federal funding, I think she would be the candidate that would be way ahead in the lead because she can bring a lot of professional uh, experience to the role of president and certainly work for the people as it should be done and uh, I mean if I could vote in Saskatchewan I think Marianne Morin would certainly get my vote because Glenn McCollum certainly isn't approachable isn't reachable and uh, we've got to get rid of the old boys club uh, there should be term limits on people that have uh, key roles in any Métis organization term limits and I think uh, another key thing here is, is Marianne Moore is a legitimately a business woman she would run this as a fair she would structure it fairly 
And again, more money would get out to the Métis in Saskatchewan. You would see more benefits and more money if Marianne Morin was president. Don't forget, not only is she a businesswoman, but she is a fighter because the uh, Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, in efforts to silence her, have actually called the colonial system on her and actually done everything they could to try to silence this woman as she had her position as treasurer and she was trying to inform the people of what was really going on in the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. And that's what you want. You want somebody who is not going to tolerate corruption and you're going to want somebody who is going to want to do fair and treat uh, people fairly and equally. Well, yeah, certainly, again, Clem Chartier and uh, David Chartrand, even Glenn McCollum, in my opinion, are colonial puppets, and they really need to sit with an elder because, in my opinion, again, they've truly forgotten who they are as Métis. Take a listen to the interview with Marianne Moore and pay very close attention to what she's saying, um, and she is a great candidate for president of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. Hi, Marianne speaking. Hey, Marianne, how you doing? This is Timothy and Alexander, Métis Warrior Media Group. How you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing good. You're staying COVID safe? We're, yeah, we are. We're trying to. That's for darn sure. It's a very uh, scary time all over the world right now, for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah we'd like to welcome you to the show. And uh, I know that there's a lot of controversy going on right now in Saskatchewan. Uh, I know that it, it's a mess out there. McCollum, the current president, is not transparent at all. And by any means is he transparent. And then you have Chartier, you have Chartier running. And Chartier is like, uh, good God, how much problems has he caused? in the Métis Nation and now he wants to be president in Saskatchewan and uh, we know what they did to you before by silencing you and, and having the cops come out there and everything and uh, but it's good to see that you're running for president and uh, you are open and coming on to the show and talking to the people which is refreshing to say the least. Yep, and thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm I am looking forward to this election, um, and you're right, um, Clem Shorty has um, been a part of Métis Nation Canada and Saskatchewan for over 20, 30 years, and uh, uh, President Mc or Mr. McCollum um, in, has been involved for 20 years also in uh, the Pine House local and um, and if you even follow that um, that uh, community, it's it's quite uh, they're used to not following the rules either under the provincial government. So with that, he came into Saskatchewan Métis Nation and continued on that same process. But you know, with uh, federal funding, you have to be a bit more responsible and and uh, being a public figure. So. You know, Marianne, I, I, I agree with you totally, and I think I, when I read on your, your, your poster, it really uh, hit a, a point with me and really resonated with me, and I'm going to read this for our listeners, and I quote, We are many little streams always moving in many directions. The job of any leader is to get all of our little streams to come together in one direction, to create one roaring river that can no longer be ignored and this is the vision and in the vision we seek clarity with clarity appears the decisions to be made and I think what really uh, stuck with me is clarity and I, I think for many many years with many uh, Métis organizations there is a lack of clarity on what's expected of a leader and I think you really hit you hit the nail on the head and I, I really really liked that and it really sat with me yes and um, you have to have a vision and you have to have a strategic development you cannot just walk in one day and say 
I want to be, you know, this leader, and I know everything, and this is the way it's going to be, because it causes chaos with, you know, the organizations that are currently in place and, and trying to produce or provide services for the Métis people, and it's it's been, Saskatchewan has been up and down now for probably, I don't know, 30 years as far as I'm concerned, that's a boat. 1980s was the last time we've seen some real programming happen in Saskatchewan. Yeah, and I, I think too, you hit, you know, programming is very, very important for any Métis citizens that are under the umbrella of an organization because, uh, you know, you're you're wanting to serve uh, your your membership or your citizens and I think that's where a lot of and and this is just my personal opinion I think Glenn McCullum really has lost his way or lost his path on uh, what it is to to serve his people uh, yeah I may stand corrected again that's my personal opinion but I think he's really not truly serving uh, the Métis people in Saskatchewan the way they they deserve to be served and treated. Exactly, and um, you know, like it's really split the uh, provincial Métis council too, and in that um, this you know kind of it's it's like how do you say where you know this is my this is my vision? You're all gonna follow it versus you know the people voted me in to provide these services to us. And we're gonna allow the people to tell me, you know, how I, I feel or they feel about these decisions. And then um, when you, you know, you guys have been watching the MNLAs and, and uh, you can see it's all top down and they speak down to the people. And it's not speak, allowing the people to speak and saying, okay, you know, you, you committed to this and what's going on and, you know, um, there's, there's no papers in front of any of the board members and, you know, you, you make bad decisions if you're just going on verbal uh, recommendations with no proper backup to make good decision making. Exactly. And transparency has been a huge problem within the various Métis organizations yep. and uh, I know that's one of the things you speak about how things need to be more transparent and the people actually need to know what's going on where when you were trying to inform the people what was going on they kept trying to silence you and uh, we yeah. and you know that's just wrong the people at the end of the day this th these leaders are not dictators they're representatives of people they're supposed to serve the people and when you do that you don't have the people come and kiss up to you to try to get which is rightfully yours because these are just representatives and these representatives need to be transparent to the people yeah and i, I think so I've been, um, go ahead oh, marianne go ahead no go um, ahead no go ahead marianne. okay so i've been I've been watching um, your show a bit uh, when we first started all our controversy, and I, I, I recognized it was starting to be a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I watched yours from Métis Manitoba, and um, actually when I first came into um, the office with uh, Métis Nation Saskatchewan, they recommended Métis Manitoba Federation or Manitoba Federation. Um, that that would be something we would follow, but to me, I could see that as only only one person making decision making, and and that doesn't fit a Métis collective, um, original traditional, um, you know, just the way we lived our life was always collective, and everybody had a role. We didn't have one person just dictate everything to you, so. So I, I kind of started, um, you know, I kind of started researching and, and then I was like, I was really quite amazed um, the more I researched into Métis Manitoba Federation mm -hmm. um, on, you know, their structure and, and companies and that and, you know, like, for example, and I, I don't know how to say this name, it, it appears to be Asian, but it's 
W E I X I E. Weezy, yeah. That person, yeah, Weezy. That person, employment was CEO of Maybe N4 Construction Inc. from 2014 to present. I think I had stopped following this in about 2019. And then um, the, that same person is senior advisor, 2009 to present from AT National Council. And then that person is president, 2009 to president, present for System Way Consulting. And then senior consultant from 2004 to 2014, Delsis Research Group. But, you know, like a person cannot do those many jobs and do them well unless they have people working under them. So that's, that's her. And then I went into Clem Shortier and he's Métis Nation Canada President, President, right? Or mm-hmm. Métis Nation Council President. And then he's Métis Nation Saskatchewan Lawyer Northwest Saskatchewan. Then he's part of the Northwest Group, which includes Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and a lawyer. So he he says it's all pro bono, but you know, in the end, you know, you end up costing people travel and and per diem and things like that. So then you look at uh, President Dave Cartrand, and then he makes the Nation Council Vice President. He's making Nation Council Finance. He's making Nation Council Communications. Then he's Minister of Finance, then he's Métis, um, Manitoba Federation President, and then he, he's very involved with Métis and for construction. Then you go to Lynn Davis, um, she's Métis Nation Council Director of Operations. She's a partner of Mark LeClaire. And then she also is um, the uh, owner of Chelsea Management Housing. And we had the question is, is she the owner of the Emmons Métis Nation Council building in Ottawa? Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, get that answer. Then you go to Mark LeClaire. So he's Métis Nation Council lawyer. And then he's Manitoba Métis Federation director lawyer. And he's Métis and for construction lawyer. And he's a partner of Lynn Davis, MNC director of operations. And then you go to Mrs. Chartrand, and she's Métis N4 director. And again, the question arose of whether she was an owner of a building rented by Métis Manitoba Federation. And now Métis Manitoba Federation actually owns the bank in in Winnipeg. But when you have a structure like that, there's, there's not a lot of room for other people to grow in areas and to grow that, um, you know, that, the, um, the whole group, because what you have here is actually people that continue to um, have all the decision-making in this group of people. And Saskatchewan doesn't really play in here because we didn't really have a structure all these years, or at least the eight years to uh, 12 years I've been watching. So, you know, like you look at that and... Uh, and it is a red flag. I'm an accountant, I'm a CPA, and I'm looking at that, and there's a real potential of, you know, like, um, for example, uh, um, we at Sci could hire under her company any one of these people and do contracts. And um, so it just keeps regenerating funds within that small group of people. Yeah, they're definitely um, uh, double and, dipping, for sure. There definitely, there definitely is too few people. I, I, I would say there's definitely. So I was kind of wanting to be Minister of Finance for Saskatchewan because I could have, you know, helped support Alberta. And um, I can't remember who at that time they said, you know, we can't pass that this audit unless you show us, you know, who's doing the contract, you know. And and they and they said we will pass the audit. Oh, well, agreed to pass the audit if we provided the contract. Well, they were never provided the contract. Right. Our, and the consultant uh, name. So, you know, like all of those kind of things, just, it just, to an accountant, it's just like, you know, what is going on? So I was really interested in becoming Minister of Finance for Saskatchewan. 
Well, ain't it ain't so, it a shame? Um, ain't it a shame that so so few? I mean, ain't it a shame that so few people are trying to maintain complete control? And like you said, uh, these are not uh, positions that they're serving for free. So uh, you got, like you said, uh, a, a bunch of funding bouncing around only bes between a certain few people, and you're not spreading the positions within the, the, the members of these Métis organizations. And that's a huge problem. Yeah, it is. And, and it gets further because uh, when I was re reading the Halix report, um, so there was two Ottawa-based firms named in the complaint in the Halix. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a system way business, and they received hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of payments from MNC between 2015 and early 2018, according to copies obtained by CBC News. So we XI, a policy advisor for Métis Nation Council, is currently listed as one of the two directors for system way. She was also listed as a, he or she was also listed as a co-director of business until April. So Métis Nation Council paid, you know, the, the CEO uh, and then like all these, you know, they're so interrelated, it's just unreal. So about 500000 between January 2015 and February 2018 for IT related and policy consulting work. About 300000 of the total was paid to Systemway through near monthly invoices ranging between Five thousand and eight thousand seven fifty, and none of the invoices provided a per tax uh, price breakdown. And um, and the thing is, you know, like I can see that this pattern that that Métis Nation Council is trying to come into Saskatchewan. You know, whether it's it's, it's um, Glenn McCollum and he, you know, like currently Métis Nation. Saskatchewan has a uh, total ownership of a company called Smetco and uh, SAS Mady Economic Development Company. Mm -hmm. And underneath Smetco has this uh, management company uh, called uh, Muscat Development Corp. And in there is the same board members of Smetco plus Glenn McCollum, which is, it is not an arm's length transaction because now you can make the decisions to give the funding to whoever you want at that table because you're the management. You get to pick the suppliers, you get to, you know, like, there's a lot of, um, how do you say those words? You can make the decisions at that table, you know, but nobody can see that the decisions you make are moving up into the SMEDCO because now they hold the housing money, the economic development money. So it's not arm's length because, you know, the president of Métis Nation Saskatchewan should not be sitting at that table influencing, you know, people that report to him as a president. So I can see that starting to try to come into our organization and, and maybe it's been there before because, you know, really we, we've never really researched past the four years we've been uh, following this this um this kind of like soap opera of, well, of I fun. I'll tell you this, uh, this show has been active for uh, two and a half years now. Uh, we've been active for two and a half years now. And in that two and a half years, we reached out to McCollum many times. And uh, he's completely refused to answer the phone, one, and two, answer any of our questions. And also that Wheezy that you're talking about and that IT company that you're talking about, let's, let's keep in mind that that's a Chinese IT company. So why would they not use Métis IT? Are, are they saying that there is no Métis out there that uh, is ITs? This makes no sense to me. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, like when one person holds five jobs, why can't, you know, like we promote as per, that person as a mentor to move other people into the jobs? You know, like it, it, the whole thing does not, makes sense it's, a, it's like a shell of an organization right it's it's just a flow through a fund and, and 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 we've got one person you know 
know, in charge of everything. And it just, it doesn't, it's not generating the value it should, which is to lobby on behalf of Métis Nation Saskatchewan or Métis Nation citizens to improve their lives. That you know, that's right, Marianne, and I, I can speak uh, with complete clarity and certainty when it comes to the Manitoba Métis Federation. Uh, I've, I've I've had a family member uh, that has worked uh, in uh, the an office there, and uh, I can tell you it's completely toxic. It's corrupt to the core, and you know I I, I could tell horror stories on how individuals are treated and it's a complete complete dictatorship and uh, you know people are are scared they're intimidated they're they're silenced because it is full of nepotism and uh, you know the it's the old boys uh, club where they don't want to let go of the pot of gold and uh, you know it, it should be a time where you know part of being Métis is kinship and community and everybody having a seat at the table where their voice can be heard and it, it seems like what you're saying and I can see it that you know uh, the the MMF is almost like a cancer. It's like a virus that's slowly going to seep in to Saskatchewan because with all these numbered companies and even like you said, David Chartrand's uh, wife Glorin. I mean Glorian. She was given uh, you know there was employee benefits that were paid to her holding company and it was just money going through just a, a very very select group of people and you know that that's when you have a dictatorship where you have just few key people that are uh you know managing a, a whole lot of federal funds it becomes very scary and i think uh what i read too is that you train board of directors in their roles and responsibilities and liability when sitting as a board member and you're also uh, a vice president of aboriginal financial officers association of saskatchewan so to me uh seeing your professional uh background i think you would you know you're the type of person that could take the reins of leadership of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and, uh, you know, bring transparency and accountability uh, to, that needs to, to happen because, you know, when the federal government is given millions and millions of dollars to an, organiz an organization that is supposed to serve uh, their people, uh, temptations and corruption uh, occur. And uh, I think, you know, like I said, things have to change how can we ever unite as metis people right across canada if uh you know we're, we're we're bickering over scraps from the federal government and and i believe that the you know the manitoba metis federation and currently maybe the metis nation of saskatchewan uh, sort of is more of a kind of colonial uh institution or organization the way that they're heading now and I may stand corrected on that uh, no you're you're absolutely right not you know they talk about how uh, reconciliation is about recognizing the differences of uh, the peoples and then uh, of, of the indigenous peoples and then you know you go to one of the MMLAs and what do they have it set up like it looks like a courthouse right Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then you have it, it raised a, a bit, and then you have it raised a bit more for the, um, you know, the top executive. So even when you speak, it's like going to speak at, let's say, a parliament building or anything else. And then, you know, like another thing is too, um, you know, many of us were raised in the Roman Catholic um, um, church. And, you know, like, when you do a prayer, when you do a prayer at the beginning, you know, it, 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 because of the way we're raised and even through the residential school systems, you're taught to behave, right? Mm -hmm. you, as soon as you do a prayer, you put it down. You don't, you don't um, question, you just, and you raise 
raise your hand when you're told to and you raise your hand or put your hand down when you're told to so the whole thing is not uh it's oppressive to to an aboriginal person that has been raised in that environment um whereas you know like when you when you think back to more of the traditional ways of um planning or you know working out issues you're in a community gathering in a circle and everybody has their chance to say you know what they think and 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 to work to, through the issue you know and and determine a solution or or a, um you know what kind of uh you know how can you make pay back to the community for what you've done right so cuz a long time ago we we see Mm-hmm. Um, every community member could tattle okay, on you to your parents. So, you know, it was just expected that we ha- we were watched by everybody to behave properly. So, so you can see that colonialism, and you can see it right away as soon as the prayer starts. It's common because we are taught that we're raised in it, and you know, like we until we start to understand like how we how our um, how we've been taught that and how to break yourself out of that teaching mm-hmm. um, and to find your voice. Otherwise, you'll just sit there and you'll raise your hand when you're told and you'll put your hand down when you're told. So it's, it's really been disheartening to see, like, you know, our strong Métis people that normally would be part of of that knowledge of, you know, recognizing when there's oppression happening are, you know, just drawn right into it. And it, it's it's a group think, you know, mentality. You know, I want to belong to this. Well, you know, like, that's the right thing for you. Let me ask, let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. If you win the election and become president, m s if you become president, <laughs> what positive changes would you make right away the most positive change i would make is i take those board of directors all and get them trained properly and say never make a decision on verbal have paper in front of you because that's a big liability Mm -hmm. next i would not allow that kind of structure to intimidate the people metis people i would just say you know what go back Go back to those open tables, round tables, you know, sit with your friends. Don't be sitting in all over the place and, you know, being pointed out or everybody notices what you're doing, you know, or talking or, you know, that's it. Because during when you're in those round table, tables, like in open, you're discussing and then you guys come together and find, uh, you know, like, maybe we shouldn't agree with that. You know what I mean? So by separating you out from your your uh, other people who know better, you're, you're forcing you into that group think mentality of the team you're now on. And um, definitely those two things. And, and get the um, AT Nation AGA going again because, you know, they are the ones, you know, currently they're trying to change our constitution, take those treasurer to take out the secretary, which are two key internal controls of this organization and really important to rebuilding uh, in a fair and equitable way for the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. And and yes, you know, you can you can get upset because when you're when you care about something, you you it comes from the heart. So, right. And what I just heard you say there what, take a little bit. What I, what I just yeah. heard you say there, uh, Marianne, is that uh, you're going to take away the dictatorship and bring the people to the table and basically have bring the power back to the people and take the power from the dictators, which is is which is a true democracy, and that's the way it should be. Yeah, and it's always been that way, you know. Like I, this is ridiculous. And I, I think you answered yeah. one of the one of the questions that I was gonna 
ask you specifically is that when I was going to ask you if you felt that being one of the very few Aboriginal chartered professional accountants with a background in federal government and then federal funding would give you an advantage over the other candidates for president, well, you're darn tootin' it would be because, uh, you know, uh, you're going to give a professional perspective in the you know finances and that's what's needed when you're dealing with federal funding and I think that's just a uh, just an A plus for anybody I mean choosing a candidate for president I mean that's just absolutely a, a must and then you know all the other qualifications that you bring to the table with training your you know the board of directors and you've also have stated uh, that the last four years that the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan leadership was sort of an amazing disregard of the constitution of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and you know we touched the, on that briefly about sort of going towards their going toward a colonial style government and I really when I when we when you answered Timothy Timothy's question it really brings it home that you're you're sort of going to bring the Métis people home to what we should be doing or what we were doing in the past and it seems that maybe dollar signs have kind of taken uh, the clarity of you as you said before of that vision of working for the people yes so um I did have a question for for you two. Um, you know, like we've been working hard and trying to contact uh, federal government regarding, you know, like the lack of transparency and, you know, just all these things that have been happening and we haven't been getting past that wall, right? So to me, the federal government is complicit in this whole thing. So it makes you wonder, okay, what do they want? right? Because they want to sign frameworks, MOUs, um, and, and each of those things is giving up, you know, rights. We'll give you money and a little bit of land, but it'll, you've got to give up your rights to, you know, like your free access to the land for, for, for medicines, for food, for the water, you know, to access the water and to build your homes and, you know, just, just a free kind of life we've always had. And it just makes you wonder, okay, and I do know we need development, economic development, that, and picking the right ones are very important, which is hard to do if you are an organization that has a bad reputation. So, you know, like, and I look at, you know, they're talking Northern Corridor, they're talking Line 3 Enbridge, they're talking refineries, they're talking oil, natural gas, you know, and and it just makes you wonder, okay, and now they want me to buy into the pipeline, but, you know, like, what is it that the federal government and the provincial government need from us? Well, what that, it is, what, you know, they're, the way that we see it, and we've, you know, we've, so, we've, we've contacted Bennett's office, Mark and, uh, huh? Well, we've, uh, hold on. We, we, we've called, we contacted Bennett's office and all that, and we've talked to different politicians. I, I can tell you this. It's uh, to us, what they want is they want leaders to be the colonial puppets that actually are not serving the people, but they're screwing their people. And I'll tell you why I say that. If you look at every time Chartrand and Chartier has a disagreement with their people, what do they do? They turn to the colonial system and they either threaten in lawsuits or they're trying to get them arrested, right? And so this is not the way that you serve your people. You defend your people, you defend your people's rights, and, you, and basically the colonial system, the government, is trying to screw the Métis people. And they're doing it by controlling certain leaders because it's a public image thing to say, okay, yeah, we're, we're taking care of the people. But in reality, they're only taking care of a handful of people because, as you said earlier, uh, there's a huge problem with nepotism. Uh, you got Chartrand and, and the few, and Chartier included, that are actually benefiting and they're not, and they've taken all these positions, and they got multiple positions when they could put other Métis into these positions, 
and, and it's just a power thing. It's just a control. These are colonial puppets. They are not leaders. Whereas we feel like you would actually be a leader for the people and you would tell the government, whoa, 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 wait a minute now. And you would actually represent the people. And so that's my opinion. What do you think, Alexander? Well, in my personal opinion in speaking with several people in the, the federal government, a lot of these leaders that have been in power for 26 years, 23 years, until somebody breaks through or breaks the chains and gets fresh blood in there, we're, can be, we're going to be continually fighting each other with this propaganda. And to the federal government, you know, all they worry about is just throwing a lump of money, money and watching everybody fight for scraps because that's, that's the way they've been doing it for 20, 30 years. And, you know, the saying is change is the hardest thing for a lot of people to digest. They fear change because they figure, well, I'm just going to go with the flow. I, I, I can't make a difference. But we found in the last little while or even the two years that we've been doing our show, we've made a lot of difference. We've had people contacting us and saying, you know, wow, I, I didn't know that or, you know, you guys are making an impact because everything that we do, we send it to the federal government. And, you know, we're working on things behind the scene we can't go into at the moment. But I can tell you that we need people to break through the cycle of corruption and insert you know, fresh blood. We've got to think about our youth, our future. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got to get rid of the old boys club because it's just like a cycle of abuse. Uh, unless somebody breaks through from that vicious circle, the psychic uh, cycle of abuse, uh, we'll never be free and we'll never be who we, who we were at the beginning. Like, we've got to go back to the beginning and uh, Chartran, Chartier, a lot of those leaders, uh, they, for, they forgot what it is to truly be Métis and not a colonial puppet. And if you look at the government, they completely aware. They're not, they're not stupid. They know that there's been a huge misappropriation of funds. They're aware of this, but they allow it to happen because it maintains these leaders have control of the people. And, and control of the decisions that are being made. And so because I, so for the life of me, I can't understand why Chartier or somebody at the MNC was not arrested after that 2018 audit. I, I cannot figure out why there was not an arrest there. Because if you or me would have did some crap like that on, uh, on taxes or anything like that, it would have been a done deal, right? But how does Chartier get a pass from the government when they were completely aware of the mis misappropriation of funds through the MNC. They're aware of the, the, the as, as we were saying earlier, the funneling of money back and forth through family members uh, and, and all this nepotism that's going on. They're turning an eye to it. And so the, the federal government is as much to blame for the corruption as these people who are supposed to be leaders. And you know what? The thing that bothers me, and you, you've got to kind of wonder uh, why a lot of Métis people kind of don't un wonder what's going on. You know, we all seen all over the news media where Clem Chartier said, I will be stepping back. Uh, it was all over the news. But you know what? Newsflash, he's never stepped back because if you go to the MNC website, every month he gives the president's message. And I know recently through one of our sources, he was wanting to speak with Minister Mark Miller in his capacity of the president of the MNC. Well, you know, you're, you know this is a case of being corrupt. He's saying he's stepped back. Doesn't that mean that he's relinquished? his role as, as president but yet he wants to talk to Minister Mark Miller in his capacity of the president of the MNC so how, do, how does that work? It's not supposed to work you know we have like I said there is supposed to be internal controls on both governments that are really failing you know miserably in, in both areas and it's going to be 
interesting after this election to see if that changes, you know. Um, I just know there's somebody has an agenda and, you know, they're not willing to let go of uh, Shorche. And to me, Shorche hasn't, hasn't met the needs of the people for many years. And he was, he's just a lobbyist. You know, he's not a controller, um, you know, and I can understand why he was upset about, you know, getting the $2.8 billion. And uh, I don't know what his percentage was, but I think it was around 10% that he expected at MNC, right? And mm -hmm. they were moving to Manitoba, getting their own bank and, you know, and lending money out to people. And then, and I still, you know, I, my family is originally from the Red River somewhat mm -hmm. and then again we're part of the Batosh and then we're part of the northern Saskatchewan claim and you know like and I always look back and I, I say to myself okay first of all you took money on behalf of the descendant of Red River you know nobody's seen any of it and I'm a descendant mm -hmm. and then you took money for veterans and all I is photo ops with twenty thousand dollars to maybe twenty veterans living, maybe more. I won't say that any of that. But you know, we've got living descendants that would like to, you know, recognize their families and bring people together to, you know, say, hey, we finally got it from as a Métis Nation veteran, our fathers or grandfathers, um, but nothing is coming through. So. You know, and speaking of lawyers, every time you turn around, they're either suing uh, the provincial government, the federal government, people, you know, leaders, um, citizens, and it's just like, how much money are you guys wasting? And who gave you that right to spend money on lawyers against your own people? So, yeah, there's definitely a need for change. Well, yeah, because you know what, Marianne, there really is no, there's no consulting of the citizen. I mean, there, you know, we're we're a bargaining tool, or we're really a number that you know they they fudge around and submit to the federal government. And uh, like I said, it's just uh, change. Uh, you know, we've got to get new people elected that you know have the people's interest at heart and I mean for, as a prime example of how the past up until this election for the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan has not been transparent or accountable at all we, we, we reached out to McCollum many many times over the last two and a half years and for the people listening to this show and I know you're aware Marianne but for the people listening to this show maybe they're not aware uh, we had another, we had a different channel where we had our shows up. So we covered a lot of the N4 construction. Uh, we covered a lot of shows before on a different channel that may not be on this channel that people are currently listening to us on. But during that time frame, we reached out to McCollum many times. And as Alexandria is saying, there has been no transparency. He, ha he does not care to talk to the people. And you know what? Y your case of what your nation did to you as a treasurer is a prime example of lack of transparency and accountability. I mean, uh, it was absolutely disgusting and the goings on that went when they, you know, they tried to remove you as treasurer and everything that you had to go through and I know that uh, the MNS had filed an appeal like you fought back and then you took them to court in one in 2020 and then the MMS uh, filing an appeal and then did nothing and then uh, like I mean that how are you treating your own citizens or somebody that was duly elected to a position and just figure that you're just going to unconstitutionally remove them from that position so uh, for me like Glenn McCollum is that transparent is that accountable that just smells like corruption to me I mean you're 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 sort of uh, a captain of a, a sinking ship if you're putting somebody that has been elected as treasurer to go through all that 
and you know, like, and it does go two ways, right? Because I can see BC um, removing their leader too, right? And uh, and you know, like, had we um, stopped the practice, you know, like uh, with myself, but you know, um, we might have been able to, you know, stop the other practice and force people to work together and to mm-hmm. listen. And instead, now all we do is use lawyers on each other. So, you know, like, and right now I'm in an election mode and you know how it is. We're supposed to be Mm re-energizing the people and not uh, kind of dwelling so much on things we can't change. Right. And, and, uh, and, uh, um, but there's no denying, you know, right now there's abuse of lawyers against, to abuse their own people and, and, and. You know, like to, and there's a certain reason you use a lawyer. It's because you need support to, you know, for a sense of fairness and, you know, treatment. And But when you use it to, you know, hold somebody back because, you know, they have a right to sit at the table and sign the checks and see who's getting the checks, mm-hmm. and, uh, and that's in the Constitution. You know, that that's one thing about our Saskatchewan Métis. Uh, constitution, we did have some really quality um, points, and and that always gives me hope. And um, what it what we were lacking was where do we go for justice? Because we have nothing in place for that. You know, the federal government doesn't want to touch it. And, and let's, so talk, let's, touch t- it. let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about those attorneys then, you for know, a minute. Like a long time ago. Ma- Marianne, yeah. let's let's talk about those attorneys for oh. a moment, because I can only imagine. That that money is coming from the dollars that are supposed to go to the Métis people, but instead these attorneys are getting paid uh, this money, and the, so the, where, why why pay the attorneys when you can give the money to the people? And I see if you get elected, what I see for see happening here is that more of that funding would actually make it to the people instead of for these lawyers to attack the people, because that these lawyers ain't working for free. They're having to get paid, and so where's that money coming from that's paying them, right? Yes, and and you, speaking of lawyers, and you know, like if our leaders, many of them are lawyers, like, okay, shouldn't you have enough knowledge and experience to be able to address this at home? That's you right. Know, like, Chartrand is a lawyer, Gerald used to be a lawyer, you know, like in um, Mrs. Patra, or Mrs. Patra is a lawyer, and you know, many of them are in the law field. Like all they do is use a lawyer. Yeah, it's just a mis. It's so that just, doesn't make sense. No, it's 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 a misuse yeah. of funds, and I think too what really warmed my heart to see to see you uh, last year so active and uh, vocal with uh, walking with our angels in regards to preventing suicide and supporting mental health. Uh, I think to me that that, that that's. Uh, leadership qualities uh, when you support things that are so very very important that are happening to our people to indigenous people anybody all over and I think uh, to me I mean when you see somebody that's so vocal supporting a cause like that I mean that's a person that's really gonna work for the person and not worry about photo ops this and that you're you're really there supporting an issue that resonates uh, with a lot of people and then of course tomorrow is May 5th uh, recognizing miss- missing and murdered women and uh, you know Saskatchewan kind of leads the way with uh, violence against indigenous women so you, you're really uh, touching on causes that are at the forefront of what some of uh, a lot of our people struggle with and it's just not about like we were just discussing, you know, throwing X amount of dollars at all these lawyers and stuff like that. We, we got to kind of get back to basics and we got to really support our people with uh, programs and initiatives that will, well, that will uh, help them and, you know, and uh, bring healing, clarity, like you've always said, and to kind of, we've got to break free of this. To me, the colonial system has put shackles on us, and uh, we've got to start breaking free and being, you know, self-sufficient as Indigenous Métis people. Yeah, 
Yes, and, and we got to support each other because, you know, when we look at the meth crisis, like, we don't even have enough beds for our, our young people. Um, you look at COVID-19 and children are being orphaned. So we're, we're just losing them in the system. Um, it's affecting our older people and we don't have elders home to, you know, at least help them live a little better, a little longer. Right. So we've got a lot of uh, social health issues that we've, we've got to build up. And I was really disappointed to see, you know, like uh, governance of Métis Nation, that one, three million in a hole. And then you look at, you know, which programs they didn't run. And it was all in the health field and in areas that could have met some of those um, problem areas and addressed some solutions. Yeah, that's right. And I, I also read, too, that uh, really makes sense. And uh, you said that you're not going to be wasting money on billboards or marketing flashing light schemes and you're going to you're going to support smaller community ads but sort of you you you're bringing the metis people like i said back to a sense of community and kinship i mean we don't need flashing neon lights to say hey vote for me vote for me i mean uh, that's not what we are as 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 a people and i think i really admire that you made that statement because uh, you're not about wasting money that could be meant for for other things and it, I think it's going to show uh, where your your heart really is towards uh, the people and putting the people at the top of the list and not you know where can I take a trip here and where can I get a travel expense for this or this conference and I think it, it's sort of giving people an insight of uh, where you're heading uh, should you be elected as the president of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan? Yes, and, and it is children first. It's not, it's not um, you know, meeting with um, government officials and, you know, them having a photo op at the residential school with a brick and that's it, you know, nothing for the people. It's just a, another heartbreak waiting for that. So, you know, we've, we've been through a lot of disappointment, um, but, you know, I think we're now ready to work on our own and, you know, ask them, you guys want to join? You're welcome. If you're not, that's okay. We can, we can figure this out. Right. And, 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 and Marianne, we're running out of time here, so I want to make sure that we get all your points out uh, that you want the people to hear, because a lot of people will hear this. Okay. And so, is there any... Anything that you feel like we may not have covered that you want to talk about? Any points that we might have left out? Um, well, for one thing, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, so, Tanse is in Cree. Ilanate is in Dene. Bojo is in French. Um, and uh, hello. And, you know, we got to recognize our Métis people are diverse. Uh, many languages. And, uh, and our culture, um, I was raised in what we call the third oldest Métis community, Green Lake, and in the culture of my ancestors and believe in the rights, freedoms, and independence of the Métis people. Um, we, we haven't come as far as we should. Uh, we are now starting to um, get into those positions that we're able to make some, you know, Decision, decisions to change lives and you know this is this is our turn and we've got to recognize that our world is changing now and it's time to you know recognize climate change is an important factor in all our economic decision making and into our social and be prepared for that now like it's our turn to you know give back you know we, we're, we're here and we're ready to show who we are and we, it's our turn to give back. And we do acknowledge the law of what goes to win. And that's the other thing is the same thing. We look after each other as relatives. So exactly. We and we don't that responsibility back. Exactly. And we don't support abuse against our people just to please the uh, the government. But um the federal no. government. And, and so that's just wrong to do that. Okay. And and I and I know that you're gonna be a fair 
president and uh and I do wish you uh, you get elected. I, I'm hoping that you get elected. I haven't said that to nobody, and so um, you know we're definitely we're definitely rooting for you. I mean, if I was able to yeah, vote, yeah. yeah, if we could vote there, we would. Okay. Trust me. So just wait. just remember, Métis people were good at what they used to call the sneak up, right? So even though we're not loud underneath, we're watching. So. Just keep watching. Yeah. Well, well some of us Thank ain't loud. <laughs> some, some of us ain't loud. We do appreciate you joining the show, and we look forward to you winning that election. And it's been an honor. Thank you, Marianne. Okay. Have a good one. Okay. You're welcome. Talk to you guys later. Yeah. Bye-bye. 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 Marianne Moore, and that is your smart vote in the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. And she really has the Métis people at heart and she's really going to bring it back to basics on what it is to be Métis. Huge, huge accounting financial experience to bring to the table in her role as president of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan should she get elected. Certainly would be my choice if I could vote in that election. More money for the Métis people. Definitely more transparency as in there is none now that's it for me absolutely folks so that would be the smart choice the smart vote marianne morin for president metis nation of saskatchewan folks